Yeah, hi. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your late night SmackDown, AEW Rampage, and also AEW Battle for the Belts. Three shows, and not one of them was like really good. I mean, I will actually no. I'm not saying SmackDown was good. But SmackDown, I mean, it was better than previous SmackDowns. It was definitely the best out of the rest. Literally, the other two shows are jobber shit. So it is time for to. It's a three for one review. Why? Because so AEW. I mean, basically, we got like a two hour rampage, which is essentially what it was. It was essentially a two hour rampage. But, oh, we got, it's a, it's an hour two of AEW, and it's eight, yeah, they basically did their stupid battle for the belts tonight, so, I mean, I thought their special battle for belts are their Saturday special, but, like, I mean, maybe it's a good thing they did it, but then they're gonna complain that, oh, you know, it was, it was on a bad time slot, but all the excuses, in reality, like, it's probably better for them that they did it tonight, okay, but in reality, even if they did it tonight, boy was a shit too. Okay? Cause like, uh, and especially isn't it fun, like wow. When you think of Battle for the Belts, there should be like a championship, both the championship and the fight and the matches, whatever, on the show. But yet, like literally, like you had a championship match in the fucking Rampage show. What's the point? I don't fucking get it. I don't know. I don't care. I just think both show like, AEW is bullshit. I mean, SmackDown, a bunch of bullshit happened, but it's like, whatever, in the end of the day. But I mean, I will say this with SmackDown, they were less bad than really, like, so in a way, the show was kind of okay. I mean, it, 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 it may be a bit generous of saying that, but I mean, I would say it was, it was not too terrible. It kept me intrigued, somewhat. I was intrigued in some of the things that happened on SmackDown, so there you go. I can say it was more good than bad. So that's kind of positive. So there you go. I will say SmackDown was not the worst show. Definitely way better than last week. I don't see next week though. It's going to be better than next week. Because fucking what the matches are are like advertised for next week. Or the things to look forward to. Ain't fucking something wor worth my time really. But it is what it is. Anyways, grab your Coca-Cola. Drink it magnificently. Spine if the bitches go. Oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit. Cheers, motherfuckers. So let's start with SmackDown, which is the season premiere. Motherfuckers, shut up! You're not the season premiere! You've been on for how many years? You never had an off date. You say, I think a season premiere would maybe be like at least a new year. Or even at least after wrestling. Why? Why you're co I don't know why. Again, this is probably just because of ratings. Or do you think... I don't fucking how is classified as a season premiere. I think that's a bunch of bullshit. What is it because fucking well, you know it's the back to school special? Is it because fucking summer has ended and you like fall so much? Like, what says that that make you been on for since 1999? 24/7. I mean, not 24. Fucking 52 Saturday Fridays. Or sometimes Thursdays and Tuesdays, then that Friday. You've been on for how many weeks? Since 1999. Since 1999. And then you're gonna fucking call it as a season premiere. Shut up. I fucking hate that they're doing it. They're calling it a season premiere. You know, I don't think... I have never... I, from If memory serves me right, you have never seen WWE did season premieres before this new era. Like, why? I don't fucking get it. I don't get it. But that's, that's a sad thing. They had to rely on calling the season premiere to make you pretend that this is a, an important show. I mean, if you didn't call it the season premiere, I would guarantee you that maybe the show would have been already just as impactful to watch. At least Reigns was on the show. You had an IC title match or whatever, which people are, you know, buzzing because of how good the match was the last time. And, you know, you're kind of establishing some importance for the robbery of Gunter and Sheamus, you know? At least it kind of feels important. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, we'll talk about the show. Let's talk about this now. Let's talk about SmackDown, dear. 
The show started with Triple H. Ooh, the game. It's great to see Triple H, don't get me wrong. It just makes me wish he was more of an on-screen personality than a fucking booker. I'm sorry, I know the Smarks, you know. Oh, Triple H's such a great booker, guys. Even though, I'm sorry. I think he's, uh, Triple H, he just appealed to Smarks. But, whatever. I mean, it def I mean, I, I, again, I would have said, like, why not have Triple H as a wrestler? But, you know, now we know what the fuck happened. You know, he can't wrestle, unfortunately, anymore, which sucks. It, it's sad. But, what can you do? Triple H is already in the ring. A loud Triple H champ pops, picks up. And then Triple H, if he's there, that he, uh, he says, There comes a time. Uh, there will come a time that you believe everything's finished, but this is just the beginning. Welcome to the season premiere SmackDown! Uh, after game! And I'm just saying to myself, like, why, why are you just there to say that? Like, can you just fucking do something or actually be part of the show? I mean, if he was there to stick around for the Roman Reigns Logan Paul thing, that would make more sense. But no, he just dared to say, welcome to SmackDown. And again, it's just like, what does he mean by things you think are finished? I mean, in a way, that kind of got me thinking, what? What, are you, are you actually not retired? I mean... That would be actually kind of cool. I mean, obviously, he ruins, like, what was the point of him coming out of WrestleMania, putting the shoes in? What? I mean, obviously, we don't know. I mean, I guess that could be the meaning. So if maybe, what, is Triple H actually not retiring and stuff like that? Like, maybe he's actually could wrestle, which would be nice. I'm not saying the guy should be full-time. But obviously, you know, obviously for his health, I do worry. But obviously, he should have a perfect, better ending to his career than the way he ended. You know, apparently his last match was a was a dark match. Not only that, like his last televised match was for a Saudi Arabia show. And in my honest opinion, that match wasn't even that good. I like if any like if, if, like especially it could you could have done way better things. If anything, his wrestle his he better off having having his last match at WrestleMania 35. But you know, he kept wrestling, whatever did whatever you know. But hey, it is what it is, okay. I don't know, he just goes, what do you expect, dude? There was a QR code on the microphone. It directs you to the, I don't know, whatever. Apparently, it directs you to a cartoon page that says, let me in. It said over, over again. Uh, so I'm guessing that means fucking Bray Wyatt. Then the bloodline comes out with Roman Reigns. Um, big pop. He says, "Wops the mess, acknowledge me. And then w w Logan Paul comes out. Then Paul Heyman cuts the promo on Logan Paul. You know, like, oh yeah, Trouble Tree, oh, you're my beautiful Trouble Tree, so I'm going to talk about you because I love you. Um, well, actually, before that, Rain says the crowd did him the same thing years ago, and he's the greatest of all time when people are chanting, Logan sucks chant, so I guess he's trying to, like, I don't know, he's, you know, trying to, yeah, you know, don't worry, Logan Paul, they were telling me that, you know, I suck, and then I became the greatest ever. That Paul him I'm for Trouble Tree, you know. The other day, he acts like who Logan Paul is, and it'll be, it's just like, it hit him in the head just like Anderson Silva will do to his brother. He says, Logan Paul is this generation's look of Mr. T and Cindy Lauper. Paul is an outside celebrity, the number one of a pop culture platform that has more eyeballs to the product, which means that they will all acknowledge the tribal chief. Uh, then they thought, what about Jordan? Bas basically, they mentioned... The people who actually, like, you know, who... It's funny how they mentioned... They mentioned Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, and even Andrew Tate, which I thought that was kind of cool. You know, kind of funny and kind of cool, honestly. They taught about... What are, what are not uh, Jordan Peterson? Well, he never had the balls of Pyro Marines. What about Ben Shapiro, who talks so fast that no one can debate him, but it would be a great open mic to have with Ben Shapiro. But it's just, it's, uh, you know, Shapiro wears a yarmulke, and that's how the balls of Pyro Roman Reigns. And then there's Andrew Tate, who just less to said the better, who then was I leave Jake Paul Schmucky's brother. We just, you know, and he says that, you know, they probably better have the hospital have the tubes in the right places once after he's done with the, well, the trauma tree is done with him. Then Logan Paul asks him, and he, hope uh, you're not, uh, you know, I guess, I get smashed by the trap of sheep. Does that mean that, uh, but you say, you, I get smashed by the tribal chief, but what does that mean? Roman Reigns or the tribal chief, Jey Uso? 
He's like referring to main event Usa, and then at least a dissension between Roman Reigns and Jey Usa there. But then same thing, calm things down. He's like, you know. Then he's like, you know, Roman is the greatest of all time. So he calmed things down, saying he's the greatest. You know, doesn't mean anything that they're all family, blah blah blah. Which I guess that's kind of cool thing, you know, about this in a way. So, but it's like, why about all people? It's Logan Paul to point this out, and he's the one, like, oh, it's tribal chief, like, oh, you know, but he didn't even mention J main event Uso, but like, I don't know. It is what it is. I mean, it would be better, like, why not, like, actual other wrestlers? And I'm sorry, like, if the crowd legit hates Logan Paul, it just, like, makes you think, wow. Reigns is the ultimate babyface out of this scenario. <laughs> it's like, wow. And again, like, this show would have been booked better, too. Like, a better, like, booking idea. Like, if you're having this, like, wouldn't it make sense? Like, heck, if you want to make something important, bring some importance for this show, why not actually have Logan Paul wrestle tonight? And maybe him facing the, like, even Sami Zayn. That would actually lead, like, lead some, like, feud of the fire or something. Or even him versus Jey Uso. That would actually make some sort of sense, maybe. I don't know. Something. I, in my honest opinion, I do think like this match, if you want to talk about box office appeal or something, like, heck, something for this big season premiere, wouldn't it make, honestly, why not just have Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns happen on tonight or on a SmackDown? That would already been big enough for fucking this show. It would actually lead to some mainstream appeal, lots of people watching this shit. That would actually be something. Because if I'm honest opinion, the, the Saudi shows, they're going to have people watch regardless. You know? I don't really think like Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns is going to be that really like that big of a deal as opposed to any fucking Saudi Arabia match. Like it, it, Just about, again, having Roman Reigns on the show, it's already big enough. You could already do almost like, at least like, even, and Matt, like you could already do something like with Lesnar. I mean, not Lesnar, like, I mean, even if they were, that already would fucking drop by Saul Ray. I mean, even more than Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns. But, like, what I, my, my point is that, like, if they really think that this is a match that it needs to happen at, at the fucking stupid Saudi show, which I'm not, again, I'm not against the idea of Saudi Arabia having their show, like, whatever, because it's no big deal. Like, oh, it's okay, UK, but not Saudi. Why? I don't, I mean, I don't care. I mean, in the end of the day, it's like, whatever. It's like, no big deal. I mean, I was perfectly like, yeah, great. But now they have the women wrestle. It's like, who fucking cares? Because no one cares about women's goddamn wrestling. Especially with this She-Hulk shit. And now they just fucking still, again, they're dressed like as covered up. Like, come on. Why? Like, it's so retarded. But I don't know. In the end of the day, who gives a shit? Like, what happens to Saudi? Like, I don't think it's that big massive big deal, like big deal, like why is that the, because again, I still think it's kind of stupid, yeah, like I get why people complain, sure it's like, but it's like really, Logan Paul still, but whatever, it is what it is, I don't know, anyways, so, Solo Sokol in the first match of Feach Rick is shit, which again makes me think, uh, but again, this match was like eight minutes or whatever, why wasn't this match like a squash match, this match should have just like been a squash like this, so, so, like, cause right after this, like, Sosa Kosh should just beating the guy. Whatever. The backstage, Roman Reigns and, uh, the Us basically, the Sanchez B.D. Chiang Uso and, uh, uh, Sami Zayn, like, usual. And then, and then, um, Roman Reigns points out how it's always been an issue, and now that it's Sami's problem, he's gonna be the one, apparently, to handle Jey Uso, so, whatever. Then we see Shit Row coming out. But then they get attacked by Legato Tefatisma, who were in mass, but then you reveal it's Legato Tefatisma besides the Electra Lopez chick. Which I felt that was like, really? Why did they not have her? Instead, basically, what they basically did is they redid, in my opinion, they basically redid this whole stupid Andrade shit. Because eventually, that's what Santos Escobar is. Is basically another Andrade. But if anything, in my honest opinion, he's better than Andrade. Because he actually talk, can talk in English. And actually speaks fluently. Which is why I, 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 like, I think that, honestly, this guy has more of a promise than Andrade. But yeah, they basically are kind of redoing. Like, he looks like Andrade somewhat. So they're basically redoing it. 
like you're redoing Andrade, but this time with Santos Escobar with Selena. It's like why, why this? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not complaining about Santos about like the Fesma being on SmackDown. I think fuck yeah. Have them on SmackDown. I think they're a good talent that they should be doing. If anything, they're like the legit Le Mexicools, you know, which I kind of get the vibe from. Remember when the Mexico comes out, you know, we be cool. And even though that sh they could be more like that. But uh, it was like, if anything, I liked also the electric Lopez more. I thought she was more better looking somewhat. I mean, I'm not saying she, uh, like, this Elena Vega's ugly. It's just like you're kind of redoing the same shit. It's <laughs> like, come on here. I don't know. I mean, why not just have both Zelena and her? But whatever. I don't know why they're not bringing her up. I don't know. My only problem is, too, is like... I'm not... I mean, sure. It's like, wow, who are these guys? Like, it kind of worked tonight. But it's like, it's your typical... Like, oh... It's this guy from NXT instead of the no vignettes, no promotions. Like, it's, the, it's typical. Like, it wouldn't be nice for a change. Why not actually have, like, vignettes for wrestlers coming up to the main rosters or whatever? But, I mean, I thought it worked somewhat. So, it is what it is. I am happy that Santos Escobar and, he, and his cronies are on, uh, on, on SmackDown. Because I think it could be something interesting. The Mexican cartel group. Uh, obviously, it's just, I wish, like, why not have the Tony D'Angelo? Like, the whole storyline could have been great for a main show. It just sucks it's been wasted on NXT. But whatever. Anyways, it's it's good seeing this happening, you know? But it's like, they're already heels again after, like, they're supposed... Um, I mean, whatever. It's like, you. it should be a new beginning, regardless. But it, it is what it is. Good for them. I'm happy they're on the main roster. Um... We see the White Rabbit, and God forbid, thank God there's a vignette. I don't even think there, it's been a long time they did a vignette. And they, they actually finally did, I think, a vignette tonight for the White Rabbit thing. And it's like revealed, like, he goes on the X sign, which is like a standard for, it's, it's a bit like extreme rules, I guess. And, oh, he gets blown up and they said like 10-8, meaning uh, extreme rules. So, it kind of, yeah, so the person who's the white rabbit is going to reveal next, tomorrow, or whatever. Or tonight, whatever. It's already midnight. Shotzi, or Shits, Shits, I would say. Shits and Raquel Rodriguez defeat Sonya Dykeville and Zia Lee. The only, uh, Sonya Dykeville looked hot. That's all I have to say in the letter. She's a hot lesbian. That's for damn sure. That's why she's a dyke, though. She's a fucking dyke, though. Karen Gross makes her makes his entrance, but then, uh, then Drew McIntyre was from behind and attacks him. I mean, I didn't mind this, but then like it, it backfired because all oh, like oh because security got involved and it's basically the same shit what happened last week. I don't know. It's like it kind of makes McIntyre look weak. Like it could just be why not just had McIntyre attack him and then Cross could like retreat. It could be just that simple. In that way, I don't know. Whatever we got, we got like we saw McIntyre have the strap again, but then oh, you know, it backfired and all oh, this. It turns against him. He's getting hit with the strap. It's like I don't know. They kind of redid the thing. I don't know. I don't think they have much ideas, unfortunately, which sucks. Like, come on here. But it was fine. It was whatever. I like these guys. I do think like really for their first match is a strap match. I get it, extreme rules, which is like. Maybe they should have had a match beforehand, and then they do a strap match for Extreme Rules, or even some, or even a match like they could always do a rematch of Crown Jewel and make that the strap match. Whatever though, it is what it is. I mean, essentially, this match could have just easily been the Extreme Rules match. I mean, I wouldn't mind like even it would have been interesting what they could do in a normal match, but like that's why you know timing is everything. That's why you shouldn't rely on a pay per being Extreme Rules, but. I mean, at least they're, for once, they're actually making every match a stipulation. They're living up to the name, but it's like that, that's like the con of, you know, when you're having the fucking name, you have to fucking require a certain thing, but whatever, it is what it is. We see a video for the Viking Raiders, and then Raiders said, fools have confused their absence for weakness, but they've been, they have been watching, waiting, and getting stronger. A woman's voice says, Valhalla awaits, to, uh, whatever that means, so, I don't know, some sh they're going to have some women joining. Some people are saying Sarah Logan. Uh, that bitch who got released. Who was married to one of the Viking people. 
I, I was thinking even maybe it might be Nikki Cross because apparently she's married to them too and they're going to like repackage her or whatever. But honestly, I don't care. It is what it is. Like, the fact is one of them is injured. So, like, who fucking cares? Whatever. The New Day... Oh, oh, yeah, backstage. Oh, the New Day interrupted the Usos and whatever and then this leads to this stupid match. Like, really? This is what happens? Like, we've seen this match many times and you don't... Like, there's... Again... People think this is a, great, a very personal rivalry. When in reality, their fucking rivalry is based on real nothing. Like, the Usos and fucking the New Day. And there's so many matches. And it's based on fucking nothing. You know what I mean? What, what's the point of this fucking feud? Whatever, it is what it is. But like, anyways. So, uh, this leads to the fucking the Usos and Sami Zayn having a match with the New Day. And the New Day with Braun Strowman defeats them. I wasn't really really that intrigued because again we already kind of knew what's gonna happen or whatever. Like, what's the point of Javon Strowman like joining them, right? Apparently, it's a mystery. You would think apparently they were like hyping, they were gonna like, have somebody join them or whatever, which could have been, I guess, the big thing if Big E. But I guess he's still injured. But you know, with that kind of shit, like you could have just had Braun. Uh, um, I don't care. Whatever, it is what it is. I don't care. So I'm guessing we're getting fucking the, for the millionth time the Uso versus the New Day again because we've seen it like. Because, God forbid, we can't see any more of this. It's so many fucking, so many times they fucking fight, don't they? Backstage, Massey and Mansoir gets laid out. And Maxine Dupree runs up to Max Dupree and says she had it with him. And then Max says, he gave them gold and they turned into trash. He's not Max Dupree, I'm L.A. Knight. So, oh, wow, L.A. Knight is back. Oh, yeah, my L.A. Knight, yeah! whatever I mean I do think it was stupid the Max Dupree shit but it's like whatever you know do I think this guy's gonna succeed in no matter what in the main roster I do wish him the best but it's like you know whatever hey, good for him though good for him he got his old name back he's not a, it's not a slave name anymore guys oh right, how can I forget Wade Barrett's on commentary now I don't mind the guy on commentary. Obviously, Pat McAfee, like, why isn't he on commentary? I, I, I get, but here's the thing. God, the commentary sucks nowadays. Raw, we're getting, we're getting two of the most boring faggots on fucking commentary. NXT's gonna get whatever. I swear to God, the commentary sucks now. What happened to the old days of good commentators or people who actually know how to talk and people who actually you fucking know? Who the fuck is... Some gay guy. Of, who, first of all, who the fuck likes Byron Saxon? I wish this is one of the fucking most boring jigaboos I ever fucking seen in my fucking life. And fucking this underwear model guy or fucking whatever. It's this fucking punchable face motherfucker who sounds like General Jerry but without the charm. I don't fucking know. It's like I hate people. Anyways. I'm 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 all happy for Wade Barrett, you know. He's a, he's not a bad commentator, but it's like really, it just means like everybody's shit and just like SmackDown probably has only better commentators. Here's what's up for next week, guys. Sami Zayn versus Kofi Kingston, which by the way they look like goofs. How is that intriguing for a main event or whatever? Ellie Knight versus Mansoir, and then I don't know some bullshit. Something about shits Blackheart and Rick. I don't know something about bullshit women's bullshit. The main event, Gunter defeats Sheamus to retain the Intercon title. The match was good. Uh, towards the end, oh, the, uh, it was like the square finish. Like, oh, he, he tapped out. In reality, he only tapped two times. But well, people thought he tapped out. He only tapped like two times. Um, apparently, it was a botch or whatever. I don't fucking know. From You're supposed to tap three times or longer for it to count as a mission. So I don't know why people are hating the referee. I don't know, but I guess it was on purpose, maybe? I don't know, it was on purpose. You don't know. You, if you, They wouldn't have mentioned it if it wasn't on purpose, so. Apparently they're mentioning it, so it might be, like, part of the story, right? But yeah, the the Imperium and the Brawling Brutes got involved. Gunter wins with a shillelagh. And, yeah, the match, uh, you know. I mean, the match was good. I will, again, uh, I think the guy, these people have good chemistry. I like Sheamus surprisingly nowadays, you know, because of this shit, you know. It's kind of like a novelty thing. This definitely gained some respect. 
the match wasn't like as great as the uh, other match, which I'm surprised how I'm surprised how good that match was. By the way, I'm surprised how I actually liked that match, and I get why people like it. This match was actually, you know, like should this really be the main event? Like, if anything, it wouldn't been my, mine if this match was the middle of the show. But honestly, for a main event, you know, like it kind of did felt somewhat by like wow, maybe the end of kind of time did felt something now. Which, honestly, like, that's kind of, I will give credit where it do. Like, yeah, maybe that was kind of a good thing. Like, it kind of felt somewhat like a world title match. Maybe in, maybe that's a little pushing it, but it felt like something. It did. It did felt like something, which kind of is kind of cool for, you know, wrestling fans or whatever, right? So I liked it. But I liked the ending, too. You know, led to a story kind of developing. They're going to have the match tomorrow for the shillelagh match or whatever. So it's gonna give that purpose, you know. Even though, like, maybe the, why not have the title match on the pay per view? But I mean, hey, maybe that's gonna like lead to if the team wins, the Sheamus team wins, then like, he wants to rematch. You know, honestly, have a few months for this rivalry. You know, defend wins, and yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. It, it, again, hopefully, it's a good story. I do think there's some purpose. You know, it's like them being British. I I don't mind. It's simple. It's simple, but it's kind of effective. Anyways, let's move on to Rampage, which Rampage and fucking Night of Bullshit is fucking Night of the Stupid Champions, whatever, Jobber Champions. John Moxley, so God forbid you have the world champion on the show, and it's like the on the fucking opener, by the way. Um, John Moxley is, oh, the, what is it, the stupid, there's this stupid group, the Blackpool Combat Club without Brian, like, it's fucking job. They're fucking struggling to defeat Jobbers, by the way, which is Private Party and Rush. Who cares? Tony Nese and Josh Woods defeats the Varsity Blondes, whatever. And RNS is disappointed. Why? I don't care. Smart Mark Sterling says he he's trademarked, I don't know, some bullshit. And then Mass Caster cuts a promo, uh, cut a promo saying he's saving ratings and Dream, uh, Draymond Green. Which, I guess, again, that was like... And he says he's there to make people watch. So, it was great to see Doug claimed. You know, that was cool. We see a video of Eddie King said, I only get 30 seconds, but MJ gets 15 minutes. And like, oh, there's a little shoot. Because, you know, he's misunderstood. Who fucking cares? What was that? That, I, that was stupid. You know, are you on purposely doing stupid shit on TV? Tay Mello and Jan Anna JAS defeat the Sky Blue and Madison Rain. Good for them. And then Isaiah Swerve's off like, oh, I'm not here to put... I'm not here trying to have a banger of a match with Billy Gunn. I just want to hurt daddy ass. I mean, God forbid a wrestler actually says, you know, I just want a five-star matchup. I want to hurt people, which, even though it's like kind of generic, but it's good. You know, fucking finally. But it's like, is he really that imitate to fucking defeat Billy Gunn? Come on. Make it make believable. And the Death Triangle defeats the Dark Order. Oh, they were fighting for Luke Harper, Brody Lee. Again, they're relying on this fucking death. Come on, you said WWE sick? They're fucking sick for lying. Is that for two years? Or that versus last match? Who cares? I'm sorry. I'm not saying who cares. Like I like Brody Lee. It's no disrespect, but like you're relying is death. Cause you have no ideas. Anyways, Pac defeated Tremperetta on the fucking battle. Okay, battle of the belts. Pac defeated the fucking jobber like Tremperetta, but Orange Cassie gets involved. I don't know. Who cares? Uh, we see Claudia Costello. Oh, what the fuck? We're always title. Like, you're boring, motherfucker. Fuck you. Jade Cargo defeats Will, the fucking fat whale bitch. But then, oh, the tranny bitch stole the title. Who fucking cares? Um, the gu gun club comes out. They're drunk. I don't fucking know. And then FTR defeats some fucking boring jobber tag team. I mean, they're not, they're big people, but it's like, who fucking cares about these people? Oh, it's R.H. shit. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, so it was like R.H. tag title match. Warlow, Brian Cage came out, and Samoa Joe. It's basically the same shit we've seen already uh, from Dynamite. It's like, why should we care about this? Is R.H. shit? I got his AEW battle for the belts. Overall, fuck both Dynamite shows. Fuck fucking fuck AEW shows. Smackdown still was boring shit, but it was like the worst Smackdown of all time. Wrestling sucks. I don't know what to tell you. Like, she knew this was coming up. Ah, oh, yay, yay. Black rabbit my ass. White rabbit. Well, anyway, so I mean, I'm looking for I I like Bray Wyatt. If he is the thing, but it's like, who cares? You know, it's like, whatever. Wrestling is... A lot of wrestling is shit. Especially with jobber shit. Like, jobber fucking... The two hours of fucking AEW bullshit. Till next time, peace. Yeah, bye.